everybody and welcome back to How To Get Fluent. It's Gareth here in London. If you're a regular uh, on the channel or on the website, you know I really like language learning events and I've been going to them for the last few years. Uh, they appeared really as a consequence, I think, of people getting to know each other on the internet uh, through YouTube and so on. So I've been to the Polyglot Gathering several times in Bratislava in Berlin, to the Polyglot Conference. Found that they're not just for polyglots, they're for anybody who's enthusiastic about learning languages, be it one language or many. And I've covered them all on the site in quite a lot of detail with reviews and vlogs. One of the things that's been happening over the last year or so is that several online events have popped up. Um, I've been aware at least of a couple in the last few months and now there's a third coming up this week and it's called Women in Language. And I'm very pleased to be able to talk to two of the three organisers of Women in Language here today uh, on the channel. So we've got Lindsay Williams from Lindsay Does Languages and Kirsten Cable from Fluent Language. <laughs> Hello ladies. Hello. Hey. Hi. Hello. Um, Lindsay, you are in Peru at the moment, I think. Yes, in Cusco. As part of a big language focused uh, trip for a year or over. Uh, you've been down with uh, altitude sickness, I think. Yeah, yeah, pretty much unavoidable. <laughs> but <laughs> especially so, when you go on the bus and you go higher and higher and higher. Yeah, and like, yeah. <laughs> Kirsten, hi. How are you doing? Hey, Gareth. Wien Yaun. I'm good. Uh, we can't see you today, but we can hear you. <laughs> we. I figured it's better that way. I have also been. I've. I don't know. I've had ice sickness or something here in the UK. We've had this crazy week of temperatures and for some reason it's given me the world's biggest cold sore and I don't want to expose somebody to it. Okay, okay right well we've got a picture anyway so um, maybe let's <laughs> just uh, let's just kick off straight into the event. Um, maybe uh, Lindsay you could tell us a bit about the underlying idea uh, women in languages so as I said it, it's you know the, the third of at least that I've heard of of these online events where did the idea come from? I think we'd individually me Shannon and Kirsten had had these thoughts you know for a while and I remember one day I think we'd been recording an episode of the podcast together and I said to Kirsten at the end you know I've got this idea like just there's International Women's Day coming up in March I'd love to just get lots of females in language doing language related stuff online in a big event and just you know big ooh, one day show everything and then Kirsten was like, yeah, you know, I've been thinking the same thing. And we spoke to Shannon and Shannon said, you know, I've had these same thoughts as well. And so it kind of evolved from there. And then as we began to write lists of people that we wanted to, to hear from, and, uh, and it was a huge list and we sort of narrowed things down a bit. And then we ended up with four days of, of this uh, inaugural event. So it's very exciting. It's going to be the first Women in Language event. It's happening online because like we're all in different places ourselves so it makes it a lot easier for a for speakers to to attend and b for uh, attendees to, to attend as well and why specifically going for a women only uh, speaker lineup at least did you feel that women weren't getting a look in uh, or enough of a look in in some of the uh, the physical events I don't know if it's that we felt they weren't getting a look in as such you know we've been to loads of language events love them all and spoken ourselves at many of them you know so we're all women so <laughs> so clearly there are females speaking at these events I think what we realized is even though there are, there are women there there's always a, a high proportion of men and not just at events but in general in a sort of public facing language space a lot of a lot of um, people that are, are sharing what they're doing are men and, and that's fine and we wondered you know why this is there are many of many many reasons this could be it could be that you know some women don't feel valued enough or that their ideas are worthy enough to be shared in one on one on one, on one, on one angle of, of this it could also just be that they don't have the the confidence to, to to go forward and to put themselves forward as much as as men do to to speak and to be public about about what they're doing with language and so we wanted to just give kind of a women only space for that because it's you know when you know that there's, I mean, one of the main things is representation, right? So when there's people that you see that are like you doing stuff that you love, that's huge. And the impact that that can have is spectacular. So that's, that's really what we're, what we're going for here. 
Great, but uh, men will be welcomed as uh, attendees on the event, I, I hope. Yeah, of course. Welcomed, but also encouraged because, you know, it's important that, you know, women know that women are great. Of course, it's like we're the same. We get that. But we want men to, to come as well, to actually to, to see and to hear from, from women in language and to be like, you know, this is, this is cool. Equally valid opinion. So, yeah, men are definitely more than welcome, encouraged. I'm glad to hear that. And that brings us quite neatly onto the programme itself. Uh, it starts on the 8th, which is Thursday this week of March, and it runs through to the uh, 11th, to Sunday. And looking at it on the website, um, which is womeninlanguage.com, I think, uh, I'll put the link underneath at the end. Um, it's an extremely full programme, as full as any, um, uh, you know, physical event that I've attended. So, Kirsten, uh, what are the sort of things you've got on there? Are there themes? coming through besides women uh, as speakers uh, and who have you got to speak? It's it's an interesting point that you're making that um, you know the, the question are there themes coming through except that we are all women and we did we did think about this I do feel that the all-female speaker format has kind of opened up some spaces that aren't normally explored in in, in most language conferences however we do we value our speakers and we contacted our speakers mostly not because they're ladies but because of because we value their expertise and we thought they would have something really interesting to say so when we first started organizing it we decided we we do want to give people um enough variety when they're coming so that it's it's not all the same talk and it's not all how i became a polyglot etc we did want to cover the variety and our theme really was the richness of the types of lives that you can have with languages you know no matter whether it's your family life or your your working life or whether you are fitting language learning into a life that is full already which is very very common for, for women and men so we decided to offer our speakers or we, we sort of asked our speakers to fit their talks around four tracks for themes and very roughly i think that that came through quite nicely so our four tracks so to say the four themes that are available are starting in languages so we've got some talks for people in the early stages who really just want to you know get started get off on the perfectly right foot we've got mastering languages so for example maureen millwood will talk about how to get off the intermediate plateau um, and then on the starting side judith meyer is talking about uh, fast track learning and I don't think there's right. a better person than you did you know to talk yes she, she knows what she's talking about so I, yes. I can't wait you've got um, Kate, Katie Harris I think talking about starting off as well if I remember she correctly. does yes yes her talk is very intriguingly titled the number one mistake learners make which we don't I don't know either we're very we don't we don't know but like we're going to be there on tenterhooks just like everybody else <laughs> and we we expanded from learning so we have talks about living with languages for example michelle froller from the intrepid guide will talk about how she moved from australia to italy i think that is going to be awesome and i love danny meitzner's talk gets me excited yeah. every time because she'll talk about how to what is it how to kill it in crime with crime fiction so she'll talk because she has a big passion for crime fiction translates uh, professionally but writes her own i believe um then she made a really strong case in a, a chat that we had beforehand just about how good crime fiction is and how excited it gets and i said look just talk about that talk about that because i, I want to hear it now and i'm sure some other people will too and our final track is working with languages so for people who are curious about what kind of careers you can have with a language we have full-time interpreters translators and there are various different angles so it goes interpreting translating We've got some online teachers, I think Chur is talking about how to get the most out of your online lessons and there's obviously being a teacher in there as well. And I'm quite excited about Fran Wrigley who runs Step Up Japanese and that is a brick and mortar language school in Brighton. So she just started her own Japanese language school and runs it in Brighton and she'll make the case that classroom learning might not be quite dead yet. So she talks about a new approach to classroom learning. So overall, 25 talks and two roundtable events as well um, and in those roundtables we'll be able to well, go a little bit more into what it's like to be a woman in this space so yeah. one roundtable is about 
Do men and language men and women learn languages differently? Are we all crazy polyglots? Um, what's a language exchange like if you're a girl? I don't know. It's a obviously it's a roundtable discussion, so we kind of take the cue from our speakers as well. But there'll be something interesting there, guaranteed. And the second one is about earning and pay gaps. And you know, we wanted to showcase real experiences or have people, you know, have have the real female voices heard in this space. So yep. I think it'd be interesting. Yeah, we're well, talking about, you know, um, different voices being heard. You know, as I was looking through the programme before this call, it was interesting to see that there were several very familiar speakers who uh, I, like you, have heard at uh, the physical events. Um, uh, people like Ellen Jovin as well, who's always good value for money, a great speaker. Uh, and, um, but also some people who I hadn't come across before, uh, who it will be interesting to hear from for the first time. So maybe just to finish, Lindsay, could you tell us a bit about the practicalities? How do we get involved? Um, is it only live or can we catch up with recordings later on? Uh, and uh, how much does it cost? So womeninlanguage.com, as you said, is the place yeah. to go to get your tickets. And the tickets are $29 which is great value when you think there's over you know you've got 25 presentations plus the two round tables so it's just over a dollar per per uh speech and then you also you know it's not just the live recording we understand that people are very busy and you can't just take four days to sit at a computer so you also get full recordings as well forever so there's no there's no time limit on any of that you know you, you don't have to watch them within a week or anything like that you've got them to go back to as many times as you whenever you want and as well as that you've got a digital notebook and a calendar so you can print out your calendar you can print out your notebook or you can keep it on your computer to to kind of make notes directly if you're more of a digital person nowadays and uh, oh yes there's a facebook group for now during the event and after for six weeks so you can connect as well with us the hosts with the speakers and with attendees with fellow attendees as well which is great and <laughs> final thing i think the final thing oh no, no there's two more things 10% 10% of profit also goes to Kiva, which is a brilliant charity that supports budding entrepreneurs around the world. So what that is, is there's a, a donation that you give to a, someone who wants to start a business somewhere or wants to improve on their business somewhere in the world. And that loan is then repaid and you can then keep paying it back. So it's a wonderful little system that we wanted to, to we were really keen on that from the, from the, from the get go. And the final thing, which is very exciting, is that we've got a little raffle just like your local village fate. So uh, <laughs> we've got plenty of prizes from us, from some of the speakers, from some brilliant language companies. Kirsten knows more about all the lists. She's been in charge of, of organizing all of that, but some you know, wonderful um, you know, people have been very generous. So we're really grateful for that. And so yeah. that is gonna be on the final day where you know, automatically with your ticket, you get entry, and then you may win a special little prize as well. Okay. Great, that's, that's clear to me at least. There's an awful lot going on. Uh, mm -hmm. Thanks very much to the two of you for taking time out to tell us a little bit about it. Uh, Shannon Kennedy is the uh, third organiser. Um, I'll put the links to your, your sites down underneath too so that people can find out more about uh, the great things that you're doing online and of course through to the website for the event. Um, so thanks a lot everybody for watching, thanks to my two guests and all that I can say is uh, I wish every success to this first Women in Language online conference. Thanks a lot. Bye. Thank you. Thank you so much, Gareth. Die Ochenwau. Die Ochenwau.